Hi Astro Addicts, in this video I want to introduce a new editing technique I discovered quite recently actually. There are lots of editing tutorials out there, but I have not seen this technique anywhere on YouTube, so I figured why not do a tutorial on it. Let me show you how to turn this image of the Seda region into this completely different experience. To stack and give a first edit to the image I will use Astro Pixel Processor and Pixinsight to finish it up. The great news, you won't need Pixinsight for this. APP can do the main part by itself. Here we are in APP. The first thing you need to do is of course to stack your image. I already did that. This is my data of the Seda region. I don't know how to pronounce this star, but you see it in the top right over there. One of the brightest stars in the constellation Cygnus. And that's where this nebula is located. And right off the bat we see that we need to still crop the edges, do some light pollution removal and get the color right. And getting the color right is the best part of this tutorial. These are almost, I think, three hours of exposure time. This has been quite nice. And getting the star look right, getting a, such a bright star look correct in a stack is pretty hard to do. APP does an awesome job. Alright, I have this image loaded. If you want to learn how to stack your images in APP, I have many separate tutorials for that. I will link them in the description and on the top right over there. Over there. Alright, the first thing we need to do is I want to crop these edges. We go to Tools, Modify. Let's draw just a slight crop of the edges rectangle and hit Crop OK. Now here we have the cropped version, remove light pollution, the next critical step, which APP can handle amazingly. I'm not going to do such a thorough job right now. Come on, stretch. Now we want to get all the parts of the image with no nebulosity. And we will mark them with these small sample boxes. If I would do this for a real edit, let's say, to post it on social media, I would do many more of these and consider more carefully what to place them. But for the sake of this tutorial, let's speed this up. I think this should work. We click on Calculate and it's gonna show us much more red. And it does. Photographing Deep Space Nebulae. Always exciting. Save. Maybe mark this with a zero behind it, so we can save it properly. And now for the most important part of this tutorial, the color calibration. Because, let's click on the Calibrate Star Colors with the new selected image. APP has three different color calibration algorithms. The look we want to go for tonight is this almost fiery looking, adaptive look I was talking about in the last video. And for this, I've already set the calibration mode to Adaptive, Black Body and Extinction. Now, you have to be careful which stars you choose. In my experience, it works best if you sample only the biggest stars. So, let's mark big stars in this image. And, of course, not Seder, but big ones. If you mark many of these small ones, it's gonna push the histogram color a lot, a lot. And we don't want that. Let's mark the biggest stars in this image. Maybe not getting, hopefully not getting too many of these smaller ones. And let's hit calculate. It's gonna take a few seconds analyzing the stars for the first time. My PC has no problems with this, it's just APP. And here we go. When I saw this mode for the first time, I was like, what the hell? I don't like this look, what is this? But... Looking at it a few times and also finding the scientific value of black body extinction is pretty neat actually. Here is this brownish and if you if you increase the saturation almost fiery looking amazing effect I really like about this. But of course we need to work on the saturation for the star also. The next steps, this is now done in my opinion, we will continue with Pixinsight with this image. So let's not stretch it, not saturate it, save the no stretch version and continue with this in Pixinsight. 
Welcome to Picks Inside. There was quite a big update recently, and I think that there have been some new features for Starnet, which is pretty nice. I will load my icons for the f for the first time. Basic editing. I will not do a deconvolution this time for the sake of this tutorial because deconvolutions take a hell of time. These are our files. Where is? I think it's over here. The butterfly nib, no, not the butterfly. This was the first edit over here. This one. The linear image, let's say it, preview stretch, and here it is. The first steps of improving this image. The first thing I always do is a very slight noise reduction with the linear noise reduction tool. Well, I, I call it linear noise reduction, it's the multi scale linear transform tool. I will click a few buttons. I will rush through some of these examples because I already shared them in most of my Pixinsight videos. If you want to check that out, I have a lengthy playlist of Pixinsight beginner tutorials. And just get a slight noise reduction on the first three wavelets. We don't need a mask for this. Just, just a slight noise reduction and we are good. That's fine. I think this first part of noise reduction is pretty important because after the stretch we want to use Starnet and I think it will yield better results if we smooth the stars at the edges a tiny bit. Alright, let's make this image non-linear and I think we're just gonna go with the basic transfer function, stretching this image automatically. I could have used the masked stretch, but it would be too much work for the, for the sake of this tutorial right now. Since the last time I edited this data, there has been the update where Starnet is incorporated into Pixinsight. I just had to pause the recording real quick and get this set up, because you need to download a few files more for the Starnet. I will leave a link in the description from the video from Galactic Hunter, how they set up Starnet. It's not that hard. All right, here we have it. We will create a star mask. I will clone the image and just apply the process. I think this works much faster now. All right, it does not. Even in the new version now, Starnet will take a lot of time to process these images, which is funny with me because it works awesome. I will just pause the recording every time I apply the process and be right back. 99, 100. And here we have our Starnet mask. You can see that there are some problems with the bright stars. Cedar looks a little bit out of order, I might say. Over here, just almost a very weird pattern, but that's not important right now. Here we go. I wouldn't have need to clone this. Here we have our star less image and the star image. And to get the look of the image I want to go for, what do we want to do first? Create masks, always create masks. For the left hand side over here, I want to get most of the nebula, smooth it a little bit. Fuzzy it a little bit to get some to get some differences in saturation. Let's go for this mask and just apply a tiny bit of saturation to boost the color. I had this preview mode replace. So we now have a mask on this image to work only on the parts of the image we want. We have this color right here, but I don't think it will be any bad if we increase all of the color. Let's see, just a test. This is pretty nice, but I think it, yes, it increased many different colors also. So let's work on this more. I want to increase this over here. Pull it up and very steep curve, increasing only this color range over here. This works, but now the color in the artifacts is not that 
bad anymore. And one thing I always want to do with this one is to do a local histogram equalization. The basic, the basic settings should be fine. Again, we already have the fiery look we want to go for, but I want to process this image and maybe I can share some of my editing secrets with you. Come on, this process always takes longer. I hope it's not too much. I think it works. Getting more of the nebula striking out in the image. And I want to go for another color situation. Maybe not this much this time. That works fine. Let's not enable the mask and it's a little bit bright in my opinion, the background. Much better. We don't need that much noise reduction, but I think I'm gonna apply some sharpening. We will need a new mask for that. Just not that much of data. We don't want to sharpen this over here, of course. Let's fuzzy it more. Sharpen only this. And we need to remove the bright region in the top right. We could do that by using the upper limits, but it will erase all of this over here as well. We will have to work on this mask with... Where is it? Clone stamp. So just going through this real quick. 50 is too small. 200? 250? Yes, this should work. Grab a dark region and just paint over this. We don't want this in the, in the mask. Enable this mask. Yes. And for sharpening, I usually... I don't have a very fine-tuned workflow when it comes to sharpening. Unsharp mask and throw it on there. And see if you like it. And yes, I do like it. Look at this. It's very subtle, but it works. And I think I'm gonna do a little bit of noise reduction on the inverted mask. To get more... Well, how should I call it? To get more contrasty diverse image. And not that much. Strength 2. I don't think it will change anything at all. This is the TGB denoise tool, and it works the best on nonlinear images. It will process every color channel by itself, and will take a few seconds. Did it do any good for us? Yes, I think so. Alright, I'm happy with this image. Maybe make it, the background a little bit darker. Can we do it darker? Yes, we can. Just a tiny bit. Let's close most of these, and now we want to work on the stars over here. Put this to the side. Close the masks, put them to the side. I don't think we need to do this much on the stars. We could smooth this color noise around them. Let's go for the TGV denoise tool again. The lab mode and chromians. Strength, pretty strong. 10? 9 put <laughs> I've never tried this before, but let's try it out. Alright, I think it worked pretty well, actually. Look at this. I think it drew some saturation from the stars. Yes, it drew saturation from the stars. And I will bring that back. Yes. Alright, and... For the most important part, morphology, also called star reduction. Since this is a complete star mask, we just need to get the morphological transformation tool. I usually go for a minimum, and this is why. It works fast and awesome, but I think the, the spread stars are still too big. I also like to use the morphological selection. And try this out as well. 
it will shrink the stars not that much, but also not get these weird artifacts you see with the erosion. But I think for this tutorial I will go for the erosion. Just by two. And now if I would want to I could also make again a mask on the big stars and shrink only them as well. But I don't think we need this right now. Now we get to, we need to add these images together. Process and pixel math down here. Pixel math is very interesting because it's just basic math with pixels, literally. The thing I'm studying right now. Amazing. And it's just a simple addition. The clone, is this the right name? Yes, plus the star mask. We will create a new image and go. Look at this. This looks amazing. Over here. These stars look way better. I think they're now a bit have this weird dark ring around them as if I would be doing a deconvolution, but this is from the star reduction. Look at this final image, this looks amazing. I don't know if I will post this one at the end of the video or the one I did earlier. Let's see which one I like better. I hope you enjoyed this slightly different editing technique. If you want to show me your Firefly images, tag me on social media, links in the description. And as for me, my name is Tim, I'm an astro addict, I wish you clear skies and may the night be with us.